Okay, let's begin to restart. Welcome to our course. Today we will talk a little more about the problem with fee boundary and constant mean curvature hypersurface, but uh, um, I will talk about it in this problem on the ball, right? So these are last lecture about this, this topic. And I would like to thank you, the SIMPA and the ICTP Research Pair, and I am supported also by CNPQ. So let's begin. Remember, um, this mini course, this is a mini course at master and the uh, beginning of PhD level. First, and uh, we is we begin with if we boundary semi C hypersurface and minimal surface in the ball. Uh, we studied about gap results, stability, and uh, index. Today, we'll talk a little more about index, the Steklovich value problem, some characterization of the critical catenoid, and uh, some, some open problem, right? So let's begin. So uh, uh, first, I remember our plan, and uh, our plan, the first letter will talk a, a little more, a little about some motivation to study different geometry. And after, in the second layer, layer we talk about the fee boundary and uh, you study about the gap result to classify some fee boundary in the case of the same C, a minimum and fee boundary and the ball. Yesterday, I talk about the fee boundary, same C hypersurface in the ball, remember? So today, in the, in the last lecture, I will talk about some characterization of the critical catenoid and the uh, index and uh, a little more, okay? So first, I, I, uh, if you have any problem, if you, if you want to talk with me, please, open your microphone and said to me because I don't read the chat all the time, right? So let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, today, the, the last lecture, lecture four. Well, what, what today, what you will study? We study about the Steklovich value problem, okay? After you talk, about some characterization of the critical catenoid. In particular, you talk about index of fee boundary minimum high surface in the ball. And uh, finally, you talk about the uh, reference, right? Some reference, because the, these talks is, there are many reference, good reference to say here. And uh, in this time here, in this lecture in particular, in particular, we give us, we will talk about some open problems, right? Okay, let's move on. If there are any questions that you that you want to say, let me see. Let me know, right? Thank you. So let's move on. I begin the this lecture. Remember about the problem with the boundary that I say in this lecture year in the lecture in the last year, uh, lecture. And uh, remember that a proper minimal submanifold in the ball, uh, which is orthogonal to the sphere, and the boundary is called a fee boundary submanifold. And uh, let, what does that mean? That means that the submanifold is minimal, is the same that you, you see that the um, coordinate function are, are function harmonics, right? And moreover, if the, the, the submanifold intersect the boundary of the ball, let me see, the sphere, so you have the same that you can calculate to satisfy this system. Well, um, I, I begin to, to dry, draw, sorry, one picture here. I know that I see, some time in this picture, but I think it's important to, to remember that. You have here um, my, my summon food, you have the ball, and uh, you remember you have the normal vector. In the boundary here, you have the conormal, 
é, é, da decor normal coincides com the vector position. What does mean? Does mean that, remember, is important for us. If you calculate the Laplace, you can show that this is, these are function harmonic. If only if the, so, the submanifold here is minimal, where E, I, and uh, what more? What more that if you, if you calculate here, this is the same that, what does mean? Let me see her has some color here. Oh, don't have color, okay. But uh, this mean that you have this one here. Ah, okay, this one. But uh, what does mean? And this is important because um, phrase chain characterize all the fee boundary minimum hyper surface when I put here F, F, B, F, B, B, M, H. That's me, fee boundary minimal hyper surface, right? And uh, the result show that fee boundary minimal hyper surface are characterized by condition that coordinate functions are Estekhlov 8 value 1, right? And uh, satisfy that. What the idea with the proof? The proof is you, you define this function here and uh, you calculate first the gradient of this function and after you calculate the Laplace only in divergent, okay? So, and this is important for us because, because now I will talk with, with you about the Steklovic value problem. And uh, I, I will relate with this problem, with the fee boundary problem. This result is, uh, this result we are doing by, for example, phrase share. Okay. So after that results, Many, many mathematicians study about this problem. So it's very rich results. So let's begin. Okay. Remember, first, are you, are you remember the definition about the Steklov eight value problem, right? Uh, consider M, a manifold with dimension N, um, we say that a function defined in n is a Steklov eight value if with eight value sigma if satisfies this system. Okay. In this case here, I will put here. On m, and uh, you have that this characterization here on boundary of M. Look at that, please. Look at that, please. See that the coordinate functions satisfy the, the, this definition. And uh, here, what do you see? What do you see that sigma is one in this case? Okay, right. Let's move on. Next, you can see this problem if we relacionate this problem with the um, eight value of the Dirichlet to norm operator. What this? Suppose that this, this manifold, the boundary in this manifold, you can take a function, u, a function on the boundary, and uh, you define this operator here. In this polo. Okay, you take the function here and uh, associate this function like that. And uh, what this function? This function here with the hat is an um, extension of the function u. What this? What, what this? This function u is the harmonic extension of u to m. Okay, you define the boundary after you extend this function to the n in this way. You can calculate, you can show that this, this operator here, L, is a self-adjunct operator 
It's no difficult because you when you calculate this, you use that, and the 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 function is harmonic in M, right? So you can more you can more that this this operator here is no negative defined, right? This is important. Why this is important? Why? Because you have the the spectral theory. And uh, you can say that you have the H valor and you have the H function and you have this, this system and moreover, this H valor satisfies that. And moreover, what is more important? You can define the first H valor if in the same, I will put here, but you can see here, okay? U is the function defined on M. I don't know if I put M or sigma. Okay. And the function defined in M, in the boundary, sorry. And uh, what more? In the boundary, this function, the integral of this function is zero. And moreover, you calculate this under this expression. I will use, um, are uh, you explain better, better for you? One minute, okay? What does it mean? You can show that these are variation problem. You can define um, um operator, and then you calculate the critical point, and so you have it some variation. What? Okay. So, um, the first question. This question is not my question. Okay. Um, this question is, how big can the first eight value be? Okay, how big? So I recommend for you, right? You can see in this book here, Crazy and uh, other people, you can see in this book. This book is very, very, uh, I think that I like very much this book. And uh, you can see a lot of papers and the important results here in this book. In particular, you can see something about that, right? So uh, let's go to the question. The question is how big you can the first eight value be, okay? Let's motivate to, to, to do this. Let's go. The first result that uh, about that is in, Weitz's book prov provided that in 1954, they here considered that omega is a, a domain in the plan. And what they proved? They proved that the sigma one, and uh, you have that estimate. Moreover, what they prove? They proved that um, this equality occurs only, on, only if you have that omega is a disk, right? You have the rigid. Okay, let's move on. So what does mean this result? That means this result that the disk unicamente, unicamente maximize um, the first set value among simply, simply connect domain with the same boundary language, right? This means that theorem. Let's move on. After um, they, he proved that this results for surface, but a surface so if simplement connects on the bound with boundary. Okay, let's move on. Fraser Chan provided motivated to study this problem here. In this problem, Fraser Chan motivated for this solution here. And the motivated by characterization that I say when I begin this lecture, Fraser Shen asked, you can, you can, what you can do with this problem here, but now when you have the, the problem with fee boundary, right? So, um, first, they, they, um, Prove the result, but not in this moment, not in free boundary, but after he proved it in the case of free boundary. And uh, what they prove? They prove that if you have a compact human surface with genus gamma, 
and k boundary, then you have these estimates. Well, let me see here. Are you what the idea here? The idea here is the same that I said for you yesterday when I proved about the theorem about Nunes. I don't know if you remember, but I use that same idea here. What I do, a minute, I will draw here. Remember, here my surface, here boundary, okay? And uh, you can see, and uh, genus I put here, K gamma, and you have the compact human surface. You can see that there is um, result. You can see this surface here, and uh, you can apply uh, this surface in the disk. And uh, remember, the disk is so that. And moreover, this application is conformal, and the uh, degree of this application satisfies that condition. This is important. I don't know if you remember, but yesterday I used that. Okay. How do you prove that? Do you prove that? Use this, and I uh, use it more. Use this information here, right? I will prove that. One minute. Let's move on. If, if, if there are any questions, please let me know, right? Okay. Remark some remarks. And the first one is if you take gamma equal to zero and kappa equal to one, you have you have the less results. Remember? One minute. The less result if you have Omega be a simply simplify simply connect plane domain, then you have that. So if you case in the first the the other result here, if you have a gamma equal to zero k pi equal to one, you have the other results. Let, let's move on. So what more you can do here? The proving, let me see here. I pitch, I put here the black dot blackboard, sorry. Um, I use the same idea that I used yesterday, right? So I use the, the, the function, our Ford function, and uh, after you can use this characterization. Let's, let's prove that in the blackboard. Oh, sorry, I have a mistake here in the right. Okay, let's continue. Uh, when you do this, you can prove that this function here, this function here, satisfies that. What does mean? Does mean that this function are the function test, like the first time that I work with you in the lecture one. What does mean? That mean that you can use the characterize, characterize the first eight value of a particular problem, right? So if you have here and take here, you can write that sigma one, I will put here, sigma one, integral of the boundary sigma is, because these are infimal, right? And uh, you can write that. And uh, this, because the characterization extension, you can calculate that, where i is one or two, right? Let's move on. What does it mean? Now, in the same time that I studied with you yesterday, I calculate here. This. 
right? But this is satisfy that. And uh, that is the same, you calculate this, right? So what I can do more? Remember, when I begin to talk about this, this function is special function. Why? Because it's special function. Because this is a conformal function and the degree satisfies that, okay? So in this case here, this is the same that you have two, um, you can say here, and the same that two because it's conformal degree, the, sig the phi, um, okay, because this is conformal. And uh, now you can use it. Now, sorry, key, sorry, two pi. Okay, now you can use that, this information here, and uh, this is. Okay, in this right here, what does it mean? Remember, in this case here, we have that phi, the boundary of sigma goes on the boundary of the disk. But the boundary of the disk is the sickle. Okay, so in this case here, what that you have that this a boundary of the the length of the boundary of the signal. So you have the proof, okay, this idea, right? Okay. Okay, let's move on. If there are any question, please let me know. Okay. After um, the same work, um, phrase share, provide that if you have a sigma compact surface of geno zero, with k boundary components and uh, k big O equal to two, what they prove? They prove that the first no zero weight value of the Dirichlet problem satisfies this, this inequality. So what does mean? Does mean that they show that the boundary given before is not sharp, but after they prove the other results and uh, and uh, all this result about that. But uh, now I don't talk uh, in these results here because I needed to talk in the other results, only the motivation about this problem, right? Okay, I don't remember, I, I sorry, I don't know if you remember, yesterday, only to take here, I will, um, Clean here. Yesterday and the second letter, I think, yeah, second letter, I show for you that you have that information. When you have phi boundary, minimal, min, not necessarily minimal, phi boundary hypersurface in the ball, you have that. You can calculate that. I don't know if you remember, but uh, you use a lot this information here, right? So what does mean? If you have in the case N surface, in the case you have a surface in the ball, P boundary minimum surface, what can do? You have that this information to the area of sigma, right? This is important. So because we are here and the minimal, right? So what the phrase shame provide? This, this we provide yesterday, but they provide more. They provide that this information here is bigger than two pi, right? So I don't prove it here this because you need more information, but you have this estimate, okay? So 
Um, I put here the other result about it doing by phrasing chain, where they prove it's some um, isoperimetric problem. And uh, I put here again the picture. I don't remember if you, the first class, I talk with you about isoperimetric problem. Remember this picture <laughs> here is small, but uh, what does picture mean? And in the first class, when I begin to talk with you about different geometry, remember, you have the curve, simple curve, closed. And what in the first class I talk with you, motivate to study different geometry. I comment with you the problem with is operatic problem. What the problem say? The problem say that if you have this curve and calculate the boundary of this curve and calculate the area that this curve limited, this area, what they prove? They prove that the area is less than language square boundary of the, this curve. I don't know if you remember that, but it's the first time that I begin the course. But don't worry. Okay, now this is in the, the case of the course, the curves. Now, phrase Shen um, as color consequence about the first one, they prove the fall results. What's the fall result? The fall result said. The sharp in his operimetric inequality holds for free boundary minimal surface in the, in the ball. So in the same timing you have here, in the case of the curve in the plan, you can prove that you have this, the inequality. So um, what's this, um, why this is true? Because you have that, um, for example, the area, let me see. This is the same that for square. Why? Because this, right? And uh, this is the same that and uh, now you can use that is this uh, is this bigger or equal to pi. So you can you can the you can see the results, right? Okay, the same motivation that I give for you. Right. In this moment here, is there any question? If there are any question, let me know, please. No? Okay, let's move on. Um I will clean the blackboard, but I, I let's move on. So in this moment here, I talk a little about the existence of fee bond minimal surface in the in the ball. And uh, let me see the results again by phrase Shen. What's the result say? Results say that if you have for every k big O equal to one, there is a binding fee bond minimal surface in the ball of geno zero, zero with cap boundary components. Moreover, these surfaces are embodied by the first aesthetic law of eight value. Okay, here in this picture, why this result important? This, has, this result important because you have a relation here in the case the existence of the fee boundary minimal surface in the ball and the relate with the problem with aesthetic law of problem, right? So in this case, here you have the picture. The picture is made by Mario Schultz. You can see the page. There are some many pictures, very beautiful. And uh, you can see a lot of, a lot of, a lot, sorry, a lot of picture, um, fee bound in the ball with your genus, many genus. It's very beautiful. I, I recommend this, this homepage, right? So remark here. The only um, previous, the only no fee bound minimal surface in the ball area. 
is uh, a sorry uh, or a um, equatorial disc and a critical catenoid. So now you have many. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on. And uh, what's what's the this this term um, important? Let's uh, I I talk with you. This term in the connection between between the fee boundary minimum surface um, in the ball and the stackel off problem. So this arises the interest of me in meeting more example of problem embodied minimal surface in the ball, right? Okay, here you have a motivation, another motivation to study this problem. <laughs> there are some many. So let's move on. Okay, now you have another question. Okay, why compact orientable surface with a boundary can be realized as proper in by the boundary minimal surface in the ball? Right, this question is not mine. So, phrase Shen show um, in the last results when you have a Get gamma equal to zero, and the number of the, the components of bundle kappa is big O equal to one. After folha Packard Zoro Tolera show that when you have a gamma equal to one, and the number of the component of the, the boundary is bigger. And couple as Lee show these results. And uh, when you have the genus is bigger, and uh, the number of the, the components on the boundary is three. Couple less, and uh, you go show the problem if you have the kappa is equal, is equal to one, and the gamma is, is bigger or equal to zero. So there are many results about that. And uh, the other question here, Okay, this is a motivation. Um, give a compact orientable surface with a boundary. How many ways can you realize it's a proper embodied free boundary minimal surface in the unit ball? The other question. And uh, the first result about that is the, the, the equatorial disk. And who provide, provided this? was a uh, niche that provided these results. And uh, these results are rich results. And uh, you can more, the question, you can see a more, uh, another question. And uh, Fraser Shen provide that any fee boundary minimal disk on the boundary, and sorry, on the ball is an equatorial plane disk. Okay, remember that. So these results is so that by analogy when you have the case when you study study sorry when you study the, the problem with meet um, minimum surface in the sphere in sphere okay um, in the case of minimum surface and the sphere is totally geodesic however there are many images on the sphere of surface on the sphere for any bigger that four, they are not totally geodesic. So this a um, big difference in the two cases. And uh, the critical tenoid is expected to be only embodied the fee boundary analyzing the, the ball, including the ball. So I will talk more about the critical tenoid because uh, there, are, there is a um, um, conjecture about that, and uh, you will explain better about this point here. Okay, let's move on. So, um, this conjecture about the critical tenoid was proposed by Fraser Lee in 2011. The critical tenoid is the only can buy the free bundle minimal surface in the bowl, and uh, that is on my move to annals. These are, these are conjecture. At the moment, there are some, there are some partial answers, but uh, not totally answers. 
right? So remember that when I, I begin to study about the free boundary um, on the ball, minimum on the ball, um, I, I, there is some analogy with the problem with um, so for minimal surface in the sphere. Now I remember again the, the, the last conjecture that is say the onyx of onyxness of the clear torus in the sphere. And uh, this conjecture was provided by Simon Brendel. Remember? So let's move on. <clears throat> um, there is some question at the moment here. Only to, to green color. You see here that uh, the first problem that uh, I show for you is open problem now is about the, the conject, catenoid conject, right? So let's move on. Fraser Chen provided that if you have a surface that is a free boundary minimal, look at this, annulus, right? And the ball, this important. So that the coordinate function are the first set value like that. Then you have that the dimension here, the ball is equal to three. And uh, you have that sigma is a critical catenoid. So you have here um, result about the critical catenoid and the result about the law problem, right? Let's move on. What does mean? Does mean this that this result characterizes the critical catenoid as the only free boundary minimal annulus in the ball. But here in the ball, remember, the ball here is dimension of n. What they prove? They prove that you can show that n equal to three. In the other words, you can say here you have the the, the dimension you assume you have the dimension n is equal to three. Reduction of the dimension. Okay, so in this case here, you have that the, the sigma one. When I talk about sigma one, I will talk in this moment here about the problem with a stack law problem, right? So, and uh, sigma one is equal to one, right? This result said that. And uh, what more? The question about the, the, the conjecture critical, crit, catenoid critical, and let me see. There, is, there are some partial answer, and uh, my graphic uses these results to prove that the catenoid is the only by the fee boundary annulus on the ball that is invariant and reflection. Um, at, draw the coordinate planes, okay? These are important results, strong results, because this provide further evidence the conjecture about critical catenoid. So this result here, they are doing by my graphic, um, give, some, give evidence that this conjecture is true, okay? Give some evidence, okay? Let's move on. Okay, <clears throat> the next result here, remember, when I begin this lecture, I begin to talk with you about, you, if you have the problem with the boundary minimum hypersurface, you can prove that the coordinate form satisfies this system, okay? Now, what's the, the natural question? The natural question is, Ask if, if you have that the sigma, a stackle of problem sigma, is the equal to one, right? So this question is was done by Fraser Shen, sorry, Fraser Lee, and uh, these are conjecture. Um, let let sigma be a compact a proper proper and by the fin bounding minimal hypersurface and uh, in the ball, then they ask if 
the sigma one is equal to one, right? If you have here the motivation here, this problem is actually this system, right? Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, what does mean? Remember that I say here, when you to that, you remember the, this, this case here, because this case here is very important and I'm motivated for that. And uh, I use that in order to result tomorrow. To, sorry, tomorrow, no, oh, today. <laughs> so let's move on. And uh, what, some, some impartial results about that conjecture. Phrase Lee, provide that sigma one is bigger or equal to uh, one half, right? After um, Batista Cunha showed that sigma one is bigger than one half. And uh, these are um, some results about that. Okay, now I talk a little, are you clear here? about some results that, uh, some result about this, that evidence the conjecture is true, right? So I remember here uh, the two, two piece property in the sphere provided by Hoss in 1995, okay? Let me see where I can here, because I think that I need this more time. So, if you if you have any question and comments, please. If you might write here in the blackboard, it's no good. Please let me know because I, I don't know if it's good for you. Okay, remember these results um, provided by Hoss that you if you have a sigma and the sphere, these are these are problem with the the minimum surface in the sphere. Right, and uh, you have here sigma um, leaving the sphere, and uh, by the closed minimum surface, then for any equatorial in this in this surface, this sphere, there, what they prove? They prove that sigma is equal to this equatorial equatorial sphere, or sigma divided sigma is exactly, exactly two components. Right, these are results. Let's move on. And uh, I remember here the conjecture doing by Yao, and uh, they conjectured that if you have a sigma leaving the sphere, tree sphere, being by the closed minimal surface, okay, then the first you know, edge value of Laplace is equal to z two, two, sorry, two, two. <laughs> Sorry for my, my talk. Okay, what does mean? Does mean that the result by horse give evidence to the conjecture. Why? Why? Let me see here. Here you have the sphere and uh, you have here, you have take a plan. Here, suppose that this is a plane. When well, I leave the plane in Euclidean for space, because here you have a sphere in three space. So you take here a vector in this place, and uh, you define here a function that uh, um, in the sigma goes to the, uh, the Euclidean space in this way. Okay, what can see? Can see that after calculate, you can prove that when you calculate this, one minute, and uh, the Laplace satisfy that, okay? Only calculate it. And you have it by Cohen, you have that the component with the, the number of the components where phi is bigger than zero, phi is big and uh, minus that zero, you have two components. So in this case here, they can prove it that the, the property of two piece, okay? So 
uh, analogous to this, these results, um, Ana Menezes and Vanderson Lima ask if you have the same result in the case of fee boundary, um, fee boundary minimum surface in the ball. Let's move on. Uh, Lima and Menezes provide that you have the same results in the case of the fee boundary minimum surface in the ball. This results the two piece property in the ball, right? So what they prove? They prove that if you have a sigma in the ball compacting and binding fee boundary minimum surface, then for any equatorial disk, one minute, only to put here. So they prove that, oh, sorry here, I give a mistake here, I put M. So here's a sigma, sorry for my mistake, sigma, or sigma is actually two components, right? Sorry for my mistake. So what's the idea here? And uh, what what's this have uh, some connection with I talk with you today? These are connection con conjecture of phrase Lee, because remember, when I talk about the conjecture of phrase Lee, they ask that I say for you is the the first set of value here is equal to one. But you remember that when I talk begin this lecture, I remember when I calculate this, you can see that this is equal to one. Remember? And in the same way that you can see that you can define here a plan the same way. And uh, now this plane lived in, lived in the Euclidean tree space and uh, defining this function in the same way you have here a vector, sorry for my draw, and uh, x, v, sorry. And uh, you can calculate that this function satisfies this and analogous, you can calculate that this function satisfies um, this. Why this happy? This happy because it x satisfies this condition here, right? It is happy because this, okay? So what's the Menezes and Lima providing? They provide that if you have this condition, you have the proper two properties, so this condition here, uh, evidence here, evidence, sorry, the, sorry, oh, one minute. This, this, this result here, evidence the conjecture um, by Fraser Lee, right? The same way. Let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> any question? Is there any question at the moment? Only a minute to take it. I needed to take a um, uh, order. No? Okay. Now I remember some facts that are provided by these facts. Um, Lee, Lee, um, Lee Wright is the same that the conjecture that I saved for you some minutes ago. Um, Lee, in the paper about survive, about survive fee bound problems, they proved that and uh, if you have a mesh of fee bond minimum nodes in the ball, the, the surface has no umbilical points. Okay, why this important? I will say, I will say, I will talk with you about that. Um, but this shows that the second fundamental form is nowhere vanished in the sphere. Okay, remember when I talk with you about the last conjecture. The K point, point uh, in this, this proof um, provided by, by Samuel Brendel is to exploit the embedded of minimal surface. But in this case here, when you think about the problem with the catenoid, um, we don't know how do you can um, exploit this, this, this hypothesis here. Um, this is very difficult, <laughs> very difficult, especially for me. Okay, let's move on. 
Now I talk about the, the other characterization provided by Capulet e Lee that what they proved. These are coloring, coloring not these results, but the other results that Capulet e Lee provide. Okay? They, 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 they provide that they only by the fee bundle minimum surface in the ball with at, at least, at least here imported, uh, at least rotationally, rotationally invariant about the, for example, the X, Z boundary, boundary component on the ball are the equatorial disk or the critical catenoid. So if you have any information about the boundary, um, some information about the, the boundary, in this case here, you can prove it or not that the conjecture about that um, catenoid critical, okay? And uh, what more can you say about here? Um, during the information about the catenoid critical, you have that, uh, we have that the hypothesis, the surface is embodied. The question is, you can remove this, the hypothesis embodied or not? Okay, recently, uh, Fernandes and uh, her co collaborator provide that. There is an um, infinite contable family of no rotational free bounding minimum annulus in mass in the ball. Okay, what does mean? Does mean that this term shows that the embodied assum assumption and hypothesis in the catenoid crit conjecture that cannot remove it. So you cannot remove the, the hypothesis, right? Okay. Is there any question? Nothing. Okay. So um, in the first part here, I talk a little about it. I talk a little about it. some problems with the first eight value Steklov problem. And now I need to talk about you about the ends. Okay. So yesterday, when I talk with you, I talk about the stability. And uh, when I talk about the stability, we begin the, the conversation about the first variation of the volume. And I show for you that if you have the, the critical point, you have that the surface or hypersurface is um, minimal, and you have that the hypersurface surface intersect the orthogon. Remember that? So, but yesterday, when I study and classify some problems, we have that um, a hypothesis. What's the hypothesis? A hypothesis that is that use is that the um, the second variation of the area, uh, um, the surface, hypersurface surface is uh, stable. What does mean? Does mean that this uh, form quadratic is bigger or equal to zero, and uh, you have the information that is equal to zero. I don't know if you remember. Okay. So yesterday I studied that. But now, in this moment, <clears throat> what I want? I want to study not more where this bigger or equal to zero. I study where this satisfies that. So where the, now I, I will define for you what does mean index and what the relation if you all they think that I talk with you today. Right, that's this motivation. So, and uh, one minute here, or sorry. Um, in this case here, yesterday, I show for you the same picture here. Yesterday, remember that this operator here in blue is called the Jacobi operator. And uh, yesterday, I, I, I work with this too. Right? So let's move on. Here now I have some observations about that for motivation to study this case where the form quadratic here is negative. Right? The first one is 
If you have a fee boundary minimum surface, hyper surface, sorry, and uh, lived in the money food with a non negative reach, right? And uh, the convex boundary, what does mean convex boundary? Does mean that the mean here, the second fundamental form here, is bigger than zero, right? Remember that. Okay, so in this case here, you have that this hypersophy is stable, okay? Why this happen? Why this happen? Because if you take if phi equal to one, you have this expression, right? And uh, what does mean this expression? Does mean that you have here the rich tensor rich is non-negative, so you have here this this is controlled. But you have here, when you, you have that the convex boundary is, the, the boundary is convex. So you have the sinon of the second fundamental form in the boundary. So you have that the form quadrat is negative, right? So the first, um, the first observation. Okay. And uh, what more you can do? Now, I put here, let me see where I, are you, are you clean the blackboard? Script for you that motivation now. Yesterday I studied that, okay? And classify some hypersophies so with some hypotheses. Today in this moment, I, I want to classify this, I mean, um, hype soft, if you boundary, hype soft, minimum, that satisfies that, okay? This is uh, this, uh, idea. One minute. So, in the case here, when you stop, when you study uh, work with if you boundary in the ball, the second variation is more, is simplest. What does mean? In this case here, you have that. I put here because all the time I need that. Then it's the same that you have the um, operator Jacob. So here in sigma plus the boundary. But remember in the boundary, you have that. Okay, I forget the element dr. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, and uh, in this case here, the Jacob operator is given by this expression. Okay, because you, you work now in the ball and the ball live in the Euclidean tree space, in any uh, Euclidean space. So let's move on. <clears throat> and now I, I will define for you what does mean index of the, um, of the hypersurface. Right, the index of the hypersurface is the maximal dimension uh, space of the, the set, um, in, so that the this form quadratic is negative defined. This is equivalent to show that if you study the number of negative weight value of this problem here. So if you have a uh, study index. Is the same that you show, is the same that you um, studied this problem here. So, some examples about that. The first example is that it's possible to show that if you have the sigma is equatorial hyperplane in the ball, you can show that in this index, sorry, index of sigma is equal to one. Remember, a few minutes ago, Oops, a few minutes ago, I showed that this, this remark. So, sorry, okay. And uh, the other, another observation that is important for us uh, is that this coordinate function satisfies that. Remember that, because this is important, okay? Let's move on. So what do, do you want? I want to calculate the index. The first 
question is, the index, uh, it's easy to calculate the index of surface, of hypersurface. Okay, the, the answer is not. It's not easy to calculate the index, right? It's not easy. Okay, and uh, let's move on. Now I talk about uh, you some examples that uh, about that. The first one is if you have sigma is not equatorial hyperplane, right? Right, and uh, sig phi is a stochastic value of function of the surface hypersurface hypersurface in this case, and uh, sigma one is less or equal to one, that's a sigma sat phi satisfies this equation. What does it mean? That means that the first, the second variation, this form quadratic is negative. Why this happen? This happen because in this case, when calculate that, when I put here, right? One minute. Um, If it satisfies the system, so in this case here you have that phi is harmonic, and uh, you have here that you have that, and uh, what more? What more here you can see if you have the phi satisfies the system, you can see that this is equal to sigma one phi. So in this case, what you can see, you can see that. You have here sigma one minus one, and uh, you have here sigma two, right? So you have if you have that sigma one is big is less than or equal to one, you can see that this variation here, the second variation here, the form quadratic is um, satisfied that. Why this? First, you have the signal here, and here you have the square. And uh, here you have that, you suppose that the sigma is not um, equatorial hyperplane, right? Then you have this observation. Let's move on. So now um, the question is, the problem. If, it's, if you have a hypersophy phi boundary, hypersophy minimum, um, what you can say about the index? You have some limitation. Yes, the result has here, I will prove it for you, is not mine, right? This result have, has what he said. He said that if you have a sigma is a fee bond minimum hypersurface in the ball that is not equatorial hyperplane, so you can prove that the index is big or equal to n plus one. What does it mean? Uh, if you have proved that, okay, what you can see, in particular case, when you put here n equal to three, you have that the surface, fee boundary minimal surface in the ball has index bigger at least four. Of course, that you have the surface here that I suppose that is not equatorial disk, right? Okay, so let's move on to prove these results, right? Let me see where. Okay. What's the idea here? The idea here is construct a um, space. And uh, you show that the space have dimension n plus one, and uh, what more? And uh, you prove that this the form quadratic in this space is negative. And uh, if you prove that the all the function in this space when you calculate that is negative, and this space have dimension n plus one, you finish the proof, right? Only that. So one minute to clean here. Yeah. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and uh, motivation, sorry, motivation to prove that is actually this. These are very important. <clears throat> Right. So, I mean, <clears throat> let's move on. Okay. And uh, let's go to proof. So, you have that sigma is a P boundary minimum hype source in the ball. So in this case, you have that the um, coordinate function satisfies that. So you have that coordinate function satisfies um, this system. And, uh, sorry. I don't know if I put the, ah, no, okay. Um, on sigma, and here on boundary. Right, so you have here any function that satisfies that, okay? So if you, if you take the function f equal to one, you have that, of course, this equal to zero, and of course, this equal to zero, right? Okay, what does mean? That means that I will consider here the space the span. You have this function and uh, this function one, okay? And uh, I show for you that this space has dimension n plus one and uh, the first plan. I, I claim that this quadratic forms is less than zero for O, P, sorry. that live in this space, right? So let's prove this, this claim. Well, and uh, take fear in this sphere. So in this case here, you have that phi can be right in this way. For example, where A, when I, I represent this, these are vector in this space, and the B live in this space, okay? No, um, this space. What more I can see? Observe that this, this, this live in this space, right? Because this. So now I will calculate for you this. Right? But I use all this information, right? So the first information that when you calculate this, we have that this is equal to zero because all the function coordinate, coordinate function is harmonic. And uh, you have that. And uh, when you calculate, for example, this expression here, <clears throat> um, let me see, I think better I write it this way is more simple, right? Only this, but it's the same. So when you calculate this, what does mean? Does mean that is the same that X, V, okay? Why this? Why this? Because all the function Coordinate function satisfy that, right? So what that do, what does mean? When you calculate here, this expression, uh, 
integrate of sigma, and here integrate of the boundary of sigma, what, what you can see, you can see that only you put here, and uh, this equal to zero, right? And uh, here you have this, you have uh, this on the sigma. And uh, this, what do you have? You have uh, this information here. You have uh, that this minus what the phi. Phi is given by this information. Is a pro is a pro is a product product in the Euclidean tree space, right? So you have that, and uh, in this case here. You have that. What more you can see here? Plus on the boundary, what does phi, phi this expression? <coughs> plus, plus, plus. And uh, here I have a, I have a, sorry, here minus. Why? Why? Because here. Okay, I commit, um, are you wrong? So you have uh, that. Right? So, but this is zero. Why this is zero? Because you have that, this information here, and uh, you have that information here. So you have that, this is zero, this, is equal this by integration, and uh, this is equal that. So you have that zero. So in this case, you have that this one quadratic is given by this expression. Right here, I take, sorry, I take no zero. And uh, what does mean? Does mean that is less than zero. Why? Right? So the first claim is provided. Now I will prove the second claim. Is there any question here with this proof? Or oh, let's move on. Nothing? Okay. If you don't have any question, I need to space it. <laughs> and I will clean that. One minute. So the first, I proved that um, the, the form quadratic in this space is negative. So um, I needed to prove the second claim is that the mission of this space, this space is equal to n plus one, right? If you prove that, you finish, okay? So suppose that, suppose, I'm sorry for my, my small letter. I forgot, sorry, sorry. Um, suppose that, that the mission with this space is less than n plus one. The proof is doing by con contradiction. What does mean? Does mean that there is a v in this space, eh? right? So that you can write a plus x v equal to zero, right? Because this dimension is less than that. So what does mean? That means that if you have this, remember that x leaving, so you have that, this expression, that. What does mean? Does mean that sigma leaves on, in this hyperplane. What's the hyperplane? That, right? But if you have that, if you have the, 
Remember that I provide for you that this expression in the boundary is equal to zero. So does me that, mean that sigma is equatorial hyperplane. But this is a contradiction. Why this is a contradiction? Because in this uh, result, you have hypothesis that sigma is not equatorial hyperplane. So you have that the dimension of this space is equal to n plus one, right? So if you, if you have that, and uh, you if you have that, you can conclude, of course, that in this of this hypersurface is bigger or equal to n plus one, right? So this is the idea, right? The proof. So remember, when I begin this lecture, all the time I talk about this because this is very important. So there is some question, let's move on. Okay, where I put it, ah, sorry, in here. Okay, let's move on. Remember that, please. So, and uh, in particular, as I said for you before, any phi boundary minimal surface in the, um, in the Euclidean tree ball has index at least four. In the case that I suppose that this, the surface is not, a, is not the equatorial disk, right? Because the equatorial disk, remember that the equatorial disk has index one, right? Let's continue. Okay, what can, can do more? Um, the Vive, Smith, and Zhu, and Tran independently provided that the critical catenoid has C 4 okay? When you put here, I will comment that um, here. When I prove it, one minute to write here. When I prove that, if you have the boundary minimum height surface, you prove that this is bigger than n plus one. And uh, when you consider n is equal to two, three, you have that that's. Right? The natural question is, the quality here occurs. So the, and the, the Vivi, sorry, Smith is who provide entrant independently, they provide that the catenoid critical has index four. So you have here a um, uh, bridge and uh, catenoid critical and index, right? Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. So remember, when you study the classical result about uh, minimal surfaces in the sphere, I talk with you about the, the result about the Clifford um, torus. And uh, uh, Urbano provide that the Clifford torus uh, is characterized as the only closed minimal surface in, in the sphere that he that has index five. Um, the, the, this result is, is this characterization was important for um, when um, Fernando Coda Marques and Andre Neves provided the celebrated um, conjecture about Yumori. Sorry, <laughs> you more conjecture, right? So uh, study about the index is very important. These are classical results, okay? Let's move on. And uh, what I can ask? I can ask if the conjecture here that I show for you is um, the critical catenoid is the only fee boundary minimal surface in the equilibrium tree ball that has index four. These are conjecture. So you have an, another open problem here. 
if, uh, if, you, if you have a sigma, a uh, free bounding minimum surface in the ball and uh, with index four, then this surface is a critical catenoid. This is a question, this is a conjecture, right? Okay, now I continue about this one minute only to drink a, a little about water. If you have any question, please let me know. <clears throat> right? Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> um, let's move on about that. So in this moment here, you can, can ask about something more. When I, I begin the, this lecture, I begin talking with you about the, the Steckloff problem and the motivate for you about that. After I talk with you about the index and I show for you that I show not, I, I claim, but I don't prove it, that the index of the catenoid is, um, has index four. Right now, you can ask what's the relation about that and about, for example, the fee bonding. Oh, sorry, about the uh, Steckloff problem, right? Okay, let's move on. And uh, Frazee, Frazee Shen provided this. Suppose that you have a surface, a, a fee boundary, minimal surface in the ball, with index four, then what they prove? They prove that sigma, I, I delete, <laughs> sorry, sigma, the first stake value, uh, stake of eight value is equal to one, right? Now in, in this result, you have, um, you have a fee bond minimal soft with index four, and you have the relation with the stake of problem, right? Now I will prove for you these results. Let me see. I you I need to clean the blackboard. One minute, please. <clears throat> so the, the idea in this these these results is like that I prove for you. But in this case here, if you have to prove that um, the sigma is equal to one, and uh, what, I, uh, what, they, what they prove, they, they, they did. They did that, suppose that sigma is less than one. If sigma is less than one, less than one, and uh, you con they construct a uh, space, and show that in this space, the index of sigma is bigger than at least five. So you have the contradiction, this idea. Now I prove that. Okay, let's move on. Suppose that, first, I don't know. Of course that if you have the index four, you don't work here with the disk, equatorial disk. Why? Because the equatorial disk has index one, right? So you can suppose that sigma, sigma is not the equatorial disk, right? Because the index is four. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, suppose that the first set eight value of the problem of if we, um, is take a lot of problem as less than one. And uh, remember, if you have that, you have a function that satisfies this condition. And uh, in the boundary, satisfies that. Right? Okay. So what's the idea? The idea is you consider the space and uh, you have this function and uh, remember that you have the coordinate function 
satisfaz that. Right? So I use this and I use this to construct this space. And that this space you put u and that you put this function x1, sorry, uh, one, two, three. And uh, moreover, I put here the function one. And uh, what I did here, the same that I proved for you. I will show that if you live in this, in this space here, my claim is that, and uh, this space have dimension five, because my surface here is not a disk. So my claim is that uh, for all in this space, you have that this satisfies that. So if you prove that, you have the co contradiction and the finish the proof, right? <clears throat> okay, let's move on. And, uh, and uh, suppose and take V in this space. Then you can write V this way. Right? When I write this, what does mean? A here is a vector in this space, B and C in this space. And uh, I consider that this satisfies that because we, uh, I don't take it, no, I take no zero, right? So, and uh, you observe here in the same, in the same way that I show for you, this function is harmonic. Why this function is harmonic? Because you have that and uh, you have that. And uh, moreover, you have that here and in this case here, you can calculate a little more. Let's go. Q minus P Laplace second fundamental form plus the boundary here and here in the sigma and uh, phi minus this expression. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have a mistake. Um, minus phi and the phi, I forget here. Okay, this is zero. And uh, you have that uh, this. So we, I need you to calculate that, right? Let's move on. What does mean? When you calculate that and uh, use it, this expression and uh, use, of course, this expression here, right? And uh, what you take here, you take that, what this? This is um, this, when you calculate, plus B, and uh, you calculate this, you have that V and uh, U. Sigma u, right? We only put that, calculate and use that, right? And uh, what does phi? Phi, this minus bu minus c, right? And uh, here you have that. So I think here you have that, that. So you have this expression and uh, a little more about that you can put here and uh, you can write that minus C. If I forget something, help me. And I see is this expression here. Right? Okay, some observations. The first one, when you calculate that one minute here, I provide for you 
a few minutes ago that you have that on the boundary is equal to zero. Why this is equal to zero? Because you have it that and you have that. So I prove it for you. And uh, in the same way, you can prove that the function u is equal the integral on the boundary of e with the function u is equal to zero. So this the same because that and that. And remember, you have here that u is a, a h function of this problem, and uh, you have that x y is h function of this problem. So this function is uh, orthogonal in the boundary because you're using the problem um, the pro um, L2 problem, right? So in this case here, what you can see here, remember if this observation, when you calculate that and integrate the first one here, the integral is zero, the, the next here, you can see that it's the same that here, one minute to put here. And what more? This and uh, when put here, you have that integrate with u on the boundary is zero. So you have not that. And uh, when you calculated this in here, this product, this equal to zero. Right, and the same time here is equal to zero. So what you have, only you have that. Right. So what does mean? That mean that you have a signal, signal with that. Why? Why you suppose that satisfies this? And uh, so in this case here, you have a minus, 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 so this less the zero. What does that mean? That means that the index of sigma is bigger, that's five. Why? Because this space, I don't put here, but I, I tell you, this space has the mission five, because this is not a disk, right? So this is a contradiction. Why this is a contradiction? Because you have by hypothesis that surface have index four. Finish the proof, right? So any question here? Well, let's move on. If you don't have any question, the, 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 this, this theorem is very important because if you have if you bond the minimal surface with index four, and uh, so you have that the first eight value, uh, stackle of eight value, sorry, is equal to one, right? Let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, here you have an observation when you compare the case of the classical result with the fee bonding, or oh, sorry, <laughs> in the case of the uh, minimal surface. In the, in the sphere, and uh, when you calculate, for example, the index, and uh, you, when you calculate the index, in the case of fee boundary hypersurface, you have here um, a difference with this, uh, with this um, problems, minimal, surface, minimal hypersurface in the sphere, and uh, you, when you calculate here, minimum hypersurface in the case of fee boundary. Right, let's move on. And uh, in this, in here, in this calculation here, I use here, I use that the I I don't need the dimension here is the surface is two, so you can prove that the same way. If you have the minimum hypersurface fee boundary in the ball, you can show that if you have index n plus one. You can share, you can prove that the same way that the index is equal to one, the same. And uh, the next result provide that 
If you have that sigma is a phi boundary, phi boundary, minimal annulus in the ball, and uh, you have index four, then the surface is a critical catenoid, right? How do you prove that? And do you prove that? Because if you have the, the index is four, I begin, I prove for you that the first sigma one is equal to one. So in this case, when you have that uh, phi bond numbers and uh, the coordinate functions are first eight value functions. So in so, sorry. <laughs> so by theorem of phrase chain, you have that, that sigma is a critical catenoid. You have this classification. So the question is, the question is, um, you have you can if you remove that annulus and uh, sigma has index for this surface is the catenoid critical. This is the question. Okay, now you have here another open problem with the with this question. It's not my question, right? So suppose that sigma is a free bond, the minimal surface in the ball and uh, the index is four, then sigma is the critical catenoid. These are the questions. Okay, let's move on. Is there any question here? Is there any question? No? Okay. So I, I let's move on. And uh, what, what, what you can say more? So, one idea to prove that is sufficient to prove that any phi bound minimal surface in the ball, a clear ball with dimension three, with uh, index four, is homeomorphic to honors. So if you have, if you prove that, and I use the previous result that show for you, you prove, for example, this conjecture. Okay. So let's move on. And uh, now I talk a little about some results about uh, um, that Trump providing. And uh, what Trump provided, Trump provided a lot of results. And uh, in this paper, um, it, they, sorry, they know, here he provided about uh, some results about phi boundary, uh, minimal surface with index four. Not only, but uh, some cases they provide that, but uh, he, he provides some a lot results, right? So let's move on. Um, suppose that you have a sigma is a um, phi boundary minimal surface in the ball and uh, property and uh, with index four, more, more index four. Then what they prove? They prove that u, I don't, u is the same function that yesterday, I I use it yesterday. I used that function, and uh, they proved that this sigma, the, this function is positive uh, in every side of the sigma, right? Why this result important? Um, important because any any other things, because if you have this condition, but you have now the surface is embedded, you can prove that. The sorry, sorry, you can prove that um, this surface sigma is a uh, star shape, right? In particular, if you prove that sigma is star shaped, you can prove that sigma has general zero, right? Why this important? Why this important is because if you have that, for example, um, for example, imagine that you, your surface has two boundary, two component boundary, and uh, you have that the genus of zero, you can prove that the surface is a critical catenoid. Let me see. This result here, exactly what I put here talking for you. Suppose that sigma is a phi boundary minimal surface in the ball and uh, embedded, embedded with index four. 
and the two components on the boundary. So in this case here, you have that sigma is a congruent uh, critical catenoid, right? Why this happen? It's happen because, because if you have that sigma um, with this hypothesis and the MOS indices for, we can conclude by previous results that sigma has a star shape. And in this case, you can conclude that sigma has zero zero. Let's move on. By hypothesis, you have that sigma has um, two boundary components. So, so in this case, you have two boundary components in G0, zero. We have that sigma uh, must have the topology of anos. So if you have that, now you can use, for example, the results by, by Shen and the phrase, right? And uh, if you have indice four, and uh, you in this case, if you have indice four, I prove for you that you have that the first state value, uh, Steklov is equal to one. So in this case, if you have a, a Steklov, it value equal to one, and uh, um, the surface is unknown, you have that this surface is congruent uh, critical catenoid. So you prove the result, right? Let's move on. One minute to, to drink our, our priest, only one minute. So th this result here, I, I think um, our very beautiful, very beautiful result. But in fact, um, uh, very difficult to, to calculate the, the index of the of surface or hype surface, very difficult. Let's move on. Moreover, um, in the same paper, Trump provide that the surface of a fee boundary minimum here, annulus, is equal to four, if only if the surface critical catenoid, right? The same paper. So, and uh, when I talk, if you have that the conjecture by um, Fraserly about the critical catenoid, if you prove that the the um, uh, surface unknowns, you have if if the surface has index four, you have that this in this case the surface is a critical catenoid, right? By these results in the preface that I show for you, let's move on. So in this moment here, I you remember for you that um, uh, some result about estimate index and uh, Sargent and Ambrosio, Carlotto Sharp provided this this estimate, estimate but uh, they provide independent uh, independent they provide this estimate. What does mean? That means that if you have sigma is a fibon, boundary minimal surface in the ball with genus gamma with k boundary components, then they provide these results. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. These results say, for example, if you have if you have the index for, in this case, for example, you have the index equal four. You have some estimate about the the boundary, how many uh, components in the boundary you have, right? But uh, these are these are good information. Um, in fact, Ambrosio, Carlotto Sharp provide more than this. They provide in the case of happy surface, and they, they use the homology group to prove that, right? This proves with Sargent Ambrosio, Carlotto Sharp is, was independent. So um, these results is analogous of sub index estimate for closed minimum hypersurface. Remember that, right? Let's move on. So a few months um, to, I don't know if it, this uh, pronunciation, pronunciation, sorry. Um, provided that this result. Uh, he provide that there is in the equation it's a triple on by the fee boundary minimum, 
phi boundary minimum surface with G0 0 or 1. And uh, the index mox with this surface is 4 or 5. And uh, the area of uh, this surface and leaving this interval. And uh, this surface is not equatorial disk or critical catenoid. So in this paper here, there is um, this question. This surface here, sigma, has in this index five. So these are open problem again. There are some open problems that I talk for you today. And uh, this is another open problem that uh, in this paper, right? I will show for you the reference, but you can, you can see this paper in the archive and the uh, to uh, this paper as published, right? Let's move on. So now here I have some references that I I use it today, but only a few because the, these these this 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 um, topics is very rich and there are some some problem very difficult to to prove here. I show for you today some of problems and I help I hope that you help me and uh, help the common mathematician community to prove these results, right? So I will comment here briefly about this, this, this reference. The first one is uh, one book. I think this book is very good book. I recommend this book because the, all the things had that I, I, I talk with you, and this book is very clear and uh, especially for students that like this topic, I think that this book is very good. All the other paper here, I comment for you. This paper here that I show for you, this lecture, the last question it is by Shu, right? And uh, I use it more, I use it to many papers of phrases I don't put here because there are many papers. So, but you can see in this book, in this book here, you can see all the references that you use, right? Okay. So, um, the plan of the book, oh, sorry, the plan of the mini course. I in the first lecture, I I remember that I begin with basic, very basic facts in the geometry, ge different geometry especially for students. The first class lecture is very basic, basic because I think about the students. So after that, we begin to study, in fact, the fee boundary minimal and the semi C hypersurface and the problems with, all, uh, with some, some um, topics. For example, you study gaps, you study stability, you study about the index, you study about the, um, what more? about the uh, Steckloff problem. So all the, this, this thing, I think that's um, important to, to, to do some connection with uh, this problem, right? Let's move on. So here, um, there is all that in this mini course, mini course uh, we study, and uh, you have here in the eight point here, some of the problems. This these problems I talk with you during my presentation to today because I think it is special to talk about this today because today I talk about something um, index index um, sorry take a lot of problem and I think that the characterization of the critical catenoid so I think that important to put together and ask some open problems in this moment, right? Let's move on. So um, I would like to thank you uh, in this moment here. Sorry, but I, I needed to tell some, some words and uh, fin final remarks. I, I, do, I would like to, to thank you, Simpa and ICTP for this project research in press because it, these are very important for me and uh, I learn a lot and I concentrate 
and uh, I create new connection and uh, very special for me. And I would like to thank you another on others. I would like to thank the Universidad de Granada in Spain. Especially, I'd like to thank the, my host, Professor Spinar, and the pro Professor Galvez that he, I um, received me in this university. And uh, I would like to uh, Universita de Torino in, in, in Italy, um, Professor Luciano Mari. I will visit here in the next week. I would like to thank the professor. And uh, I would like to, to thank my university, Universidade Federal de Sergipe in Brazil, Northeast in Brazil. And um, I would like my family for support. And uh, I would like the people that helped me to do this possible. And uh, I would like to, to thank my country, Brazil, uh, because that invest in my academic training and grants, a CAPES and CNPQ, and without this support, certainly I would not be here. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you for your attention, thank you for, for your presence here. Here, only a comment I put here, uh, here, this, uh, in this point, sorry, in this point here is 3S, and uh, here, one minute, here is my country, Brazil, and here is northeast where I live, and here is my city, Aracaju. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know.